kind of take it from there. So basically, I think that if you if you go down this path, which is the multi-bagger path, the interesting thing is that and 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 all all value investing, there are a couple of data points. You know, John Templeton used to say that the very best value investor or analyst will be wrong one out of three times. Like 33% error rate is the lowest error rate for the very best practitioner of the art. If you were a kind of brain surgeon and you had even a 3% error rate, there might not be too many people coming to you for brain surgery. But I think in terms of value investing, you could be wrong half the time. And I think I've probably been wrong close to half the time and still end up with a phenomenal track record. So, and especially if you focus on the multi-baggers, you know, companies that would go up 10X or 100X, basically in a lifetime of investing, if you end up, ended up finding just two or three or four hundred baggers at the age that you're at right now, that's all you need. In many cases, if you just found one, that might be all you need. And so we have all this time. And on the other end, we just need to find things just once. Don't even need to find them that many times. When I started investing, started my journey value investing about 27 years ago, 94, 95. In the first, in the first five years, when I was not running my funds, I was just running my own money. I started with about $1 million in 95. By the time in the first five years, I had had uh, 200 baggers in the first five years itself. And then I think from 2000 to 2022 now, I haven't had any 100 baggers. But I think that there might be some, some more in the future, some that are kind of you know, still hopefully going through the, their journey. So, so you, don't need, you don't need very many of them. Uh, a few of them can get you to the promised land. And I've had, I would say, I've had when I look back, a rather sloppy journey as an investor because I was trying all these different things. If, I think if in 94 or 95 I had done what I am telling you to do now or suggesting what you should do now, I think I would have done a lot better than how I've done. So if I had purely focused 10 or 100 baggers, I think, I think the results would be vastly better. I remember in 95, January 95, when I had the $1 million, I had mostly invested in the U.S. markets. but I had an interest in the Indian markets as well. And I thought there were two or three areas where it could do well. And I decided to put 20,000 out of the $1 million, just, just 2% of the portfolio into India at that time. And I opened a, a brokerage account. Uh, and so just my own money, so I opened an NRE brokerage account with Kotak. I decided to put half that money, $10,000 in one stock, which was a IT company. And I was in the, I was in the IT services business at the time. So I knew, I knew this business really well. Satyam Computers, which at that time actually was a pretty honest company. They kind of went wayward, I think, in terms of their ethics about 10, 12 years after that. But in 95, they were a clean company. So I put 10,000 to Satyam and, uh, in 95. And I think by the time it was 2000, it had gone up 150x. The 10,000 had become one and a half million dollars, approximately 1.4 million or something. And then the remaining 10,000, I put into three other stocks. I bought two of the courier companies that were listed in India at the time, Blue Dart and Skypack Courier, because my perspective was that the Indian Postal Service was just hosed. And if you really wanted to get a package from point A to point B in India, you really had to rely on private people to get it for you. I don't think the postal service was reliable. And so I thought that 
these businesses that were focused on that would do quite well. So I was just going to make three investments, actually, uh, half in Satyam and then half in these other two. And then at the last minute, I was also very impressed with Kotak because I was just very impressed in dealing with their people. And so I decided to split the other 10,000 three ways, you know, one about 32, 3,300 in Kotak and 3,300 in the other two businesses. So when this 10,000 became 1.4 million or whatever uh, in 2000, the other three businesses had done nothing for five years. They was pretty much sitting close to what I had paid for them, like no movement for the most part. It is not realistic to think that if you put $20,000 in the Indian market and you get, you know, 1.4 million, something like a 70X, that you there's still some meat on the bone and there's still some juice to be extracted, if you will. So I said, this is a pretty good result. And for no really good reason, in 2000, I sold the other three stocks. And I told Kotak, you know, sell these stocks and just send me the, the money back. I basically liquidated the entire Indian portfolio in 2000. There was no, there was no really good reason to sell Blue Dart or Skypack or Kotak, no particular reason that uh, uh, I had to do that. Kotak from 2000 till now is about a 500X. Blue Dart is about a 300X. Skypack went kind of backwards, I think eventually went bankrupt, but it was down like 90% or something. So basically there were massive home runs. There were two massive home runs, which, like I said, I, I, there was no reason to kind of make that decision to sell, but that's what happened. And, you know, I missed those two rides. But even with the sloppy nature and kind of stupid analysis that I did in those sell decisions, the end result was fine. And the remaining 980,000 that I'd invested in the U.S., over the next four or five years, by 99, 2000, it was about 13 million or so. So that had gone up quite a bit because one of those one of those bets had gone up 100x. Uh, 100,000 became about 10 million or so. So anyway, the thing is that even with a lot of sloppiness, what I'm saying is that basically what what when you look at that investing that took place then, just the two bets that were a hundred bagger were responsible for like 80, 90% of the returns. It didn't matter. The rest didn't matter if it all went to zero. The results would have still been, been great. And so that's the nature of this multi-bagger type investing is that it can tolerate a very high error rate. And of course, your, your objective as an analyst should be to try to keep the error rate as low as possible. In 2019, I was visiting Istanbul for the second time and Turkish market actually, I think is the cheapest market in the world because they've got just a lot of crazy macro things going on in the country, very high inflation and weird policies and everyone's exited and so on. In fact, Turkey reminds me of the Indian markets maybe in the early nineties or so on. And I ran into this business on my second trip in 2019 where the market cap was $20 million and the liquidation value was more than six or $700 million. Uh, it was actually a dollar bill trading for three cents, which I don't think it never happened to me before then. So in the previous 24 years of investing, that never happened. And I think till I leave planet Earth, I don't think it'll happen again. But Basically, you know, if I look at this business, which I bought at, you know, three cents on the dollar, like the 20 million market cap, I, I was surprised with the volumes. Fabry Funds owns one third of that business. And we pretty much got one third of the business for like $8 million or something. If the business did not increase in value at all, but it got to fair value at some point, we would have a 30x return. 30 or 33x or something. But now we've owned the business for about three years. They've actually increased value of the business quite a bit in the last three years. And it's run by phenomenal people, really good capital allocators. 
And I think they will increase the value of the business quite significantly in the years ahead. So having learned my lesson from Kotak and Blue Dart and so on, the only thing I need to do with this business is do nothing. Just sit there and spend time talking to students like you so that the time is used up and not used to sell things. Hopefully 20 years from now, we still own that business. So if that business tripled in what it's worth, the value, like, you know, was 600 billion, million or something, let's say it became 2 billion, we would have a hundred bagger. And I think it can, it can triple its value in maybe five or 10 years. And it can keep going after that. I mean, the, the two people running it, they're not that old. So I think they could, they could keep compounding for a while. And so when I look at kind of that particular business, and it's, it's a small part of the portfolio today, it's gone up, I think in the last three years, it's gone up like five, six X or so. So it's gradually moving towards its, its value and so on. But I'm just saying that, that the nature of these hundred baggers is that this one business could become bigger than everything else in the portfolio, even though we made such a small bet with it. So with that, I think I'll stop there. Would love to hear what you have on your mind. We can talk about what I just talked about or stuff that is unrelated. So thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for the insightful session. It was so interesting to listen, uh, listen to you. Uh, now we will open the floor for questions from the audience. Those who want to ask their question can raise their hand. Uh, okay, Sunil, you may go first. Okay, uh, so that, uh, thank you for this insightful session. Uh, so uh, in this, uh, today we uh, this, listen a lot that uh, value investing is uh, dead in the modern world. So what is your opinion on this? Well, you know, all intelligent investing is value investing because we have so many stocks around the world and because there are so many things going on with different companies around the world that, you know, like, this news anchor, uh, Jim Cramer, says there's a bull, always a bull market somewhere. So I think that if one is an investment analyst and you know, picks through stuff, uh, you, will, uh, you will find that there are some parts of the market and 